Nears Attic Books. They had this little uh, gargoyle sitting there reading. Uh, so yeah, they had the they had all these carts that would be started before it started to rain. And all these books are for a dollar, so I did grab. Oh, let me turn that down here. Um, I did grab quite a few one dollar books that were really good. There's the second story, and then there's the uh, basement uh, where they have all the uh, other bargain books. Hello everyone, uh, I'm back with a, another book haul because I love books and I'm going to be retiring soon from nursing so I'm going to have a little more time to read through my books. Uh, so I went downtown today, uh, downtown London, Ontario, uh, to Attic Books which is my favorite um, used bookstore. There's many, many, many used bookstores in London here but this is kind of my favorite. It's quite an old building. Uh, it has three stories. There's the basement which sells a lot of um, uh, very discounted books um, and the main floor has the newer arrivals um, but they're all I mean they're all used books so the newer arrivals and the third floor has more books and they also have like posters and pictures and and very old books that are all locked up <laughs> to sell and it even has a ghost uh, I guess they did a paranormal investigation quite a few years ago and they captured books flying and um, the smell of cigars coming from the basement and they call this ghost Roland but I've never encountered Roland but anyway uh, so I had to go downtown to help Julian drop off some ceramics at the art gallery downtown uh, he sells many many ceramics in that gallery and he needed a hand uh, carrying some of the stuff in so uh, while they were pricing things and that I went to Attic books and I got quite a few this time. Um, out front uh, they had two carts full of hardbacks and, and uh, soft, soft covers that were just a dollar each and so I got some really good books for a dollar and the rest of them were anywhere from I don't know two dollars to like seven dollars at the most. Um, so I got little little Abby here is laying on my books there so um, she's keeping them warm for me I guess. So I will start with um, some uh, Ruth Ware books. Now I sh uh, showed on my, uh, I think it was just my last video or the one before that, some of the books that I, I had uh, purchased and I did get uh, some, a Ruth Ware book and this is called One by One. And this is the one where uh, a group of co-workers get uh, snowed in. Oh, there's Lou the, the bird, um, at a luxurious rustic ski chalet. And uh, of the eight co-workers, each with something to gain, something to lose, and something to hide. And I also have previous, previous, previously, I can't talk, uh, read The Woman in Cabin uh, 10. Um, so I was able to, um, now this one I purchased in... Um, in a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware in uh, a Giant Tiger chain store here in London uh, for $4.99 and um, this one Nora hasn't seen Claire for 10 years not since the day Nora walked out of her old life and never looked back until out of the blue an invitation to Claire's hen party arrives a weekend in a remote cottage a perfect opportunity for Nora to reconnect with her best friend to put the past behind her but something goes wrong very wrong and as secrets and lies unravel out in the dark dark wood the past will finally catch up with uh, Nora so that was from Giant Tiger so I was able to find these two Ruth Ware books in uh, Attic Books and uh, this one is uh, The Death of Mrs. Westway and uh, Harriet Westaway, better known as Hal, makes ends meet as a tarot reader, but she doesn't believe in the power of her trade. If she did, what would the card say about the choice that lies ahead of her? So she receives a mysterious and unexpected letter bequeathing her a substantial inheritance. Uh, 
so anyway, uh, yeah, I don't think thing go, things go too well after that. But anyway, um, so I, I did get that one. And then this is um, uh, The Turn of the Key by uh, Ruth Ware. And uh, this one, um, I think I showed this previously, though. Did I get, maybe I got two of these. I can't remember now. Um, anyway, she... Uh, Stumbles across an ad for a living nanny uh, with a staggeringly generous salary. It seems like too good an opportunity uh, to miss. Um, so yeah, obviously things, probably things don't go too well after that. And then the other day from uh, Rexall Pharmacy, um, I did pick up this bargain book for $5.99. It was Susan Kersley. Uh, Bellwether. So a lot of her books uh, take pr uh, place in the present. And then at that same location, it kind of goes back and forth from past to present, um, uh, what happened in the past, and it kind of intermingles with what's happened in the present. So I really do like her books. So I was able to find uh, a couple of more of her books, and this is called The Shadowy Horses. And archaeologist Verity Gray has been drawn to the dark legends of the Scottish borderlands in search of the truth buried in a rocky field by the sea. Her eccentric boss has spent his life searching for the resting place of the lost Ninth Roman Legion and is convinced he has finally uh, found it. Uh, a local boy has seen a Roman soldier walking in the fields, a ghostly sentinel who guards the bodies of his long dead comrades. So, uh, she may uncover secrets someone buried for a reason. So, yeah, I love history. I love uh, mysteries that take place in, in Great Britain and that. Um, so that one looks really good. And what was the... Oh, this one is by Su Susan Kersley, uh, Mary Anna. Uh, so, Julie Beckett believes in destiny. When she moves into Grey Weather, it's a beautiful 16th century farmhouse. She sus suspects that more than a coincidence has brought her there. The locals are warm and welcome welcoming. Uh, she senses a haunting sadness about her new home. She learns of Mary Ann, a beautiful young woman who lived there 300 years ago. Um, so yeah, they kind of jump back and forth from the, the past to the present. Um, uh, and that's what I like. I, I, when I went to uh, like Ireland or Iceland, you walk into these old buildings that are like literally five, six, seven hundred years old, and you just wonder who walked these halls and what were their lives like. That's what I just I just soak that kind of stuff up. Alrighty, and then another author I do like. Uh, I really do like her mysteries. I like her writing style. I like her characters, and that's Minette Walters. And I have uh, read um, uh, quite a few of hers in the past. Uh, a couple of these were just a dollar each, and this other one I think was like three seventy-five or so. Um, but yeah, I really do like her mysteries. Um, they, there's a lot of twists and turns. Um, uh, there's just so many, there's a lot of suspects, but not so many that you get kind of overwhelmed in that. Um, I don't like whodunits where there's so many characters, you're just losing track of who's who, and um, but I do like hers. Uh, this is called The Devil's uh, Feather. And uh, I think this is a... Uh, a reporter corresponded with Reuters uh, who's looking into some uh, sexual assaults and that sort of thing. Um, and then this is The Shape of Snakes. I hate snakes. Um, when Annie Butts dies in a rain-soaked gutter, uh, everyone is sure she's killed by a traffic accident. Only one person, the woman who found Annie, is convinced she was murdered. She has no evidence, but she's prepared to risk everything to prove it. And this is called The Chameleon's uh, Shadow, and it's about a war veteran from Iraq um, who, uh, let's see, is disfigured, alone, and unmonitored. He sinks into a private world of guilt and paranoia. Um, so he comes under suspicion for uh, murder, but he's innocent and tries to... Uh, 
find out who the real murderer is. So the, that's Minette Walters. And then uh, this is Affinity, and this is by Sarah Waters. Uh, I don't believe I read any of her novels. Um, uh, let me see, what was this about again? Oh, an upper-class woman recovers from a suicide attempt. I think this is back in 19, the early 1900s, 1910, 1910 or something like that. An upper-class woman recovers from a suicide attempt. Um, she has begun visiting the woman's ward of Millbank Prison, Victorian London's grimiest jail, as part of her re rehabilitation. And she becomes increasingly fascinated by an apparently innocent inmate, the enigmatic spiritualist Selena Dawes. And um, I think these two are just a dollar also. And uh, this one is called The Impact of a Single Event, a national bestseller by R.L. Prendergast. And this one is a terrible car accident occurs. Richard and Sonia, a couple with a crumbly marriage, stop to help the critically injured victims. In the process, they find a 140-year-old journal by the side of the road. Six different people have written in the journal. Through the entries, oh, sorry, the, though the entries span three centuries, the writers share a quest to search for meaning in their lives. So that sounded really good. Um, this is The Bone Peddler by Sylviana Hamilton. In the crypt of the Abbey Church, the monks were boiling their bishop. <laughs> yeah, sounds interesting. I think this takes place in 1209, so I just love those ancient medieval ones. So this um, Sir Richard Strachan is a ex-crusader, and he makes his living dealing with divine body parts or holy relics, uh, which was big business back then. Um, so he leads a uh, dangerous but profitable life, retrieving stolen re uh, relics, negotiating deals, and locating new artifacts. Um, so yeah, that one sounded very interesting. Oh, I love those old medieval books. This one is by Kate Atkinson. It's emotionally weird, it's called. <laughs> and at first I wasn't going to pick it up, and I kind of did. And um, it sounded actually kind of interesting. Uh, so beautifully written, brimming with quirky characters and original storytelling. So on a Pete and Heather island off the coast of Scotland, Effie and her mother take refuge in the large, moldering house of their ancestors and tell each other's stories. Uh, but then strange things start happening. Why is Effie being followed? Is someone killing the old people? And who's this mysterious dog? Uh, a truly comic novel, achingly funny in parts, uh, executed with wit and uh, mischief. So it's got really good reviews, so I, I just thought that was really interesting. And uh, this one is called The Daughters of Foxcoat Manor. And this one, um, Rita is a nanny to the glamorous Harrington's two children. A small town girl raised by her grandmother, she fell in love with the seemingly perfect London family. And then tragedy strikes. Uh, Mrs. Harrington and the children and uh, the nanny are sent to Foxcote Manor for the summer to recuperate. Uh, a baby is abandoned outside their gates. The family takes her in and will never be the same. Within days, a person will lie dead in the woods and a society scandal explodes. So that is the Daughters of Foxcote Manor. And then a couple more. Uh, um, this is called I Let Go, and this is by Claire McIntosh. On a rainy day, a mother's life is shattered as her son slips from her grip and runs into the street. Uh, so she uh, moves to a ramshackle cottage on the remote Welsh coast, trying to escape the memory of the car accident that plays again and again in her mind desperate to heal from the loss of her child. Um, at the same time, the novel tracks a pair of Bristol police investigators trying to get at the bottom of this uh, hit and run. And then this one is called The Swedish Girl, and this takes place in Glasgow, in Edinburgh. And uh, 
When Kirsty Wilson lands a room in a luxury Glasgow flat owned by a Swedish fellow student, uh, she can't believe her luck, but it turns to terror when the Swedish girl lying dead in their home and their flatmate, their male flatmate is accused of murder. And um, so I, I haven't read any of these books, but I guess the main character of these books is this D.S. Lorimer. Um, so he calls in a, a psychologist to help him unravel the truth and that sort of thing. So uh, I haven't read any Alex Gray novels, but I think they take... Um, some of them take place in uh, Glasgow and some in Edinburgh. So, um, yeah, I think it's just Edinburgh. I'm mean, sorry, Glasgow that these take place in. But anywho, um, I know I've I've, read, I've seen some descriptions of his books, and I just um, uh, really wanted to try his out there. So, anywho, um, I think that's it. Yeah, so some really, really good deals. Um, I, I'm glad I just found some Ruth Ware books and some Minette Walters and Susan Kersley. The, um, I'm glad I was able to get some of those at a really good price. So anyway, little little Abby sleep in here. Um, so yeah, I just got to do a little bit of housework in that, and I think I'll start reading. <laughs> I do have a lot to... Um, get through. So I was thinking of maybe doing a um, a little series where I actually do book reviews of books that I have finished. Um, if you're interested, let me know. Um, I do have to take a lot of books back. Like these, I got like probably about 50 books that I read through or more um, through all the lockdowns and everything and they weren't the charity shops where I dropped them off weren't accepting them, but now they are. So I thought I'd maybe do some quick reviews before I send those to the charity shop. So if you do want some reviews on some books I've read, just let me know. And so yeah, that's my uh, wonderful little book haul. I just um, just get excited with uh, some new books. Uh, so anyway, everyone take care. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.